welcome everyone. I'm going to be your host today. My name is Jeremy Schiefling, former LinkedIn Insider and ChatGPT partner. I'm joined here by your amazing host with the most. We've got Sarah and Addy from the career team. So please give them some love. And just so you know, we're going to get started in a minute or two, but this is not your typical webinar. And you know what I'm talking about. Kind of sit back, turn your mind off a little bit, do some multitasking. No way. You're going to get a lot. You're going to learn a lot. I'm going to make you work a lot. So with that in mind, I want you to come to the chat and I want you to let me know where in the world you are coming from prior to arriving at USC. Maybe you're an LA native. Maybe you're in the Bay Area like me. Maybe you're from New York or Mumbai or Shanghai. Come to the chat right now. Adina, Brad, Caden, Chuyang, let me know where in the world you got your start before arriving at USC. I'm going to tell you guys I'm in Mountain View, California, aka Google Town. We've got um, Aki from Tamil Nadu, Chachi from Taipei, Naku from India. Um, I saw Toronto in there from Madeline. Caden is an LA native, Angelino. Hannah from the Bay Area, yes. Zoe from Reno, Riddy from Mumbai, Anandi from Hyderabad, Bridget from NYC, the Big Apple, Leo from Shanghai, Austin from the BK, Brooklyn, that's where I was born, Brad from LA, Denver, Shanghai, Kathmandu, Beijing, Minneapolis, China, Mumbai, Taipei, Kiev, oh my goodness. Addie and Sarah, I am just blown away because I'm thinking I've got to go back and get another degree at USC. You guys have the entire world in your community. That is Trojan strong for sure. Okay, now that I have a little flavor of where you're coming from, I wanna give you a taste of where you're headed. And I can tell you right now, based on LinkedIn's own data, job descriptions that mention generative AI are up 220% in the last year alone, which tells you that the future is unfolding right now and you have access to the ground floor. But to understand where you're coming in, I want you to rate your AI skills on a scale of one to 10 for me. One being, oh, I don't know, Jeremy, this whole thing could be a big fad. 10 being, move over, Jeremy. I could teach this AI workshop in my sleep. So come to the chat right now. Give me an AI self-eval scale of one to 10. Okay, Kristen kicks off the bidding with a five, right in the middle. And that's at a one. I think Glenn said six with a question mark. Chachi's at a four, Adam's at a five, Yellen's at a four. If I had to do a little sort of armchair data science, I would say we're leaning towards I don't know, a median of a four, mean of a 4.5, which actually tells me, Sarah and Addy, we're at the perfect place to begin because we have a lot of folks who know a ton already, but a lot of hunger to learn more. So I'm going to bring it over to our amazing host to kick off the session. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Sarah O, and I'm a senior career advisor. And I want to welcome you all to the AI Career Series Part 2. Job Search 2.0 LinkedIn plus ChatGPT Secrets Revealed Workshop. So before I hand over the mic to Jeremy again, um, I wanted to share a few agenda and housekeeping items today. So Jeremy will lead an interactive workshop on AI, LinkedIn, and ChatGPT. Um, and uh, we'll take questions at the end as well. So if you have comments or questions, please use the comments function or the questions function. And the questions function should be specifically used for questions only. Additionally, we also turned on reactions. So please feel free to let us know how you're feeling uh, about the content and showcase your excitement by using the emojis. And lastly, please be aware that this workshop is being recorded and will be posted on our USC Career Center YouTube page. So we kindly ask that you use appropriate language and actions throughout the workshop. So that's all for our housekeeping items for the day. And I would now like to hand over the mic to our keynote speaker, Jeremy Schiffling, who will be introducing himself. So Jeremy, thank you so much for being here and we look forward to learning from you. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you, Addy, as well. I actually want to start on that note, which is giving some love to your awesome team. I'm going to tell you right now, if I could be back in your shoes, starting school or getting ready to graduate from school, I would be connecting with Sarah and Addy because these are the folks who can not just support your success today, they're plugged into every Trojan from the last generation. They're gonna be plugged into every Trojan in the next generation. They are the hubs of the Trojan ecosystem. So please give them tons of love using those reaction buttons that Sarah was talking about and be sure to connect with them on LinkedIn and beyond because they really are awesome. Now, a little bit about your speaker today. As indicated, I've been in your shoes and I've been in Sarah and Addie's shoes too because before I was in Silicon Valley, I got my start as a kindergarten teacher 
of all things back in Brooklyn. And yet one of the things that I loved about teaching kindergarten was showing my kids how to use technology, how to build PowerPoints or make MP3s. And that same nerdy passion led me out here to work at Apple and Google and all these cool places. But there were two places in particular that really rocked my world. The first one was working inside LinkedIn. Now that might not seem so exciting on the outside, but here's what I learned on the inside, which is that inside LinkedIn, you can see how the world's hiring process works because this is where recruiters go to find talent. And so I'm gonna be teaching you all those insider secrets today. In addition, I had another mind blowing moment about two summers ago when my boss, Sal Khan, the guy behind all those Khan Academy videos, called me into his office and said, Jeremy, please close the door. Now, I thought I was about to get fired. And Sal said, hey, it's not that. What I want you to understand is that we have an incredible opportunity. I've just heard from my buddy um, over at OpenAI, Sam Altman, that they want us to be the very first education partner for this new thing they have coming out that's gonna change the future of our species. And I was like, come on, Sal, don't be ridiculous. What are you talking about? And then he showed me ChatGPT six months before it went live to the public. And I knew Sal was right. This was gonna be big. And so I've made my mission for the last couple of years to work with top students like yourselves around the world to land the jobs they love using these tools. All I ask in return is three simple favors. Number one, I'm gonna be throwing some pop quizzes your way. So get ready to answer those in the chat. Number two, I would love for you to volunteer for some live demos. Not only is it more fun for everybody, I've got a really juicy prize, which is actually not my boring old chat GPT book. No way, I've got something way better. If you volunteer for a live role play today, I will give you a free LinkedIn profile makeover straight from the guy who led LinkedIn's education team. So if you wanna get found for opportunities at Google, in Hollywood, in New York City, wherever your dreams are, I'm gonna make that happen for you, but all you've gotta do is volunteer for me. And then third and finally, even if you don't wanna volunteer, no worries, just do me the biggest favor of all, which is take action. Don't just look at my screen, do it all on your screen. So here we go, first pop quiz. If you had to guess how many resumes the average recruiter in the world is juggling at any given time, what's your best guess? Is it A, 100 resumes at once, B, 1,000 resumes at once, or C, a whopping 10,000 resumes? Okay, I'm seeing so many answers flood in, which I love. Edward says C, question mark, maybe. Cole says B, about 1,000. James says C, Samuel says C, Alexis says C. I love that Akalesh actually says D, 100,000. I love that. Well, it turns out that most of you guys are right because look at this. According to research from the largest HR organization in the world, the average recruiter has 30 to 40 jobs to fill. The average job attracts 250 resumes on average. Do the math and these poor recruiters are buried. So now, next question. How do they get themselves dug out? Specifically, how many seconds of attention are they spending on each of those resumes on average? Is it A, six seconds? B, 25 seconds, or C, 60 seconds. And once again, Sarah Addy, your Trojans are on fire because Caroline says A, Noe says A, Chu Yun says A, and guess what? This is the key stat. You may spend six hours or 66 hours working on your resume during your time at USC, and yet your window of opportunity to win over that recruiter is basically the blink of an eye. And I tell you that not to freak you out, but to give you empathy for that audience. Yeah, it's tough to be a student. It's tough to be a job seeker. I've been there throughout my career, but it's also tough to be on the other side of the screen finding top talent. And so what I want you to understand today is how those folks do their jobs and how you can use those insights to get a job of your own. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get real because in 2024, I know of exactly zero recruiters left in the world who are still reading every last resume, even at just six seconds a pop, because we live in a world of LinkedIn, where with one click of their mouse, the recruiters can search a billion professionals around the world and find the best talent. So now the question becomes, if every recruiter is on LinkedIn, what are they searching for? Is it A, a certain degree, BA, BS, MBA, B, a certain school, USC, UCLA, or C, a certain job title? Show me an accountant, show me a nonprofit manager. And this time, once again, the USC crew is on it. Aditya says C, Caroline says C, Leo says C. And indeed, the critical thing that every recruiter is hungry for 
is not just where you are, but what you can do for them. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna now show you the single most important screen in the entire hiring process that no other student gets to see except for you guys, because you are on the inside, thanks to your career team. And what you are looking at here is LinkedIn, but it's not the free version that you and I can use anytime. It's a special tool called LinkedIn Recruiter. It costs $10,000 per year per seat. And the reason it's so expensive is I'm gonna admit something that LinkedIn will never admit, which is more than Google and search, more than Facebook and social, LinkedIn is a monopoly. There is no other tool in the world that has as much information about every professional, which is why it's a gold mine to recruiters and why you have to understand it as a job seeker. And so if you understand that recruiters need to understand what you can do for them, I want you all to look at your LinkedIn profiles right now. Um, Fatimata, Chenji, Joey, pull up your profile. And I want you to look specifically at the headline, that little piece of text right below your name. Chances are it's going to say something like student, majoring in history, majoring in business, all those are good things. But probably what it's not going to say is what you can do out there in the world. And that's where we got to get you to today, to broadcast a clear signal of what you want, what you're awesome at, so recruiters can find you for that exact thing. And if you're feeling at all confused or nervous about that path, fear not, I've been in your shoes. But I have a foolproof uh, process to help you find that perfect path. And if you want the first LinkedIn profile makeover, all you've got to do is raise your hand right now. First hand gets it, and it's going to Caroline. So Caroline, I'm going to allow you to talk. Um, and if you are game for it, just click that microphone button, and we're ready to rock. Hi. Hey, Caroline. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you? I'm good, and you? Doing awesome. Can we just have a lot of Trojan love right now for Caroline? She is so gutsy to put herself out there first but she absolutely is representing Trojan pride. So send in your best emojis, make it rain love. All right, Caroline, you can see that coming in. People are super excited. Tell me this, I'm Caroline. nervous. <laughs> you're nervous, yeah. And just so you know, you got a, a huge rooting section. Um, tell me what you're excited about. What are you studying at USC? What are you thinking about in terms of next steps? So I am a licensed attorney from Brazil. I'm an international student Great. and I'm taking my LLM in privacy law and cybersecurity. And I'm looking for a job after the LLM, an OPT. And I take the bar exam, New York exam in, Calif in New York and in California. Got it. And so would your dream job to be an attorney, to be a paralegal, like what are you trying to get to? I am understanding the paths here in the United States yet. Um, I would like to work with privacy here in the United States or cybersecurity. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you're thinking about privacy, privacy, you're thinking about cybersecurity. Yes. Now, here's the big question. Have you already done those jobs before? Uh, yes. Uh, as an attorney in my country, I have been working with privacy for the last years. Oh my so goodness. I worked with privacy in Brazil and I have another graduation about the GDPR in Europe. So this is the reason I'm here right now and I would like to find some job in the future in this area, but I still don't know about the titles of these jobs. And this right. is the reason that I'm here right now. Oh my goodness, that's perfect, Caroline. So Caroline yeah. says, hey, I know about the domain in the same way that everyone who's studying something at USC mm -hmm. understands your space, but maybe Caroline's challenge is, what is it actually like to do that job in the US? Or what is a job called even? So Caroline, if I could help you learn from USC alumni who are out there in the privacy space, would that be interesting? Would you be interested in learning from USC Trojans who are already super successful? Uh, yes, I think this is very important and it's very important to me to understand um, the path. What can I find being a USC student and in this area because I don't have any contact with other person working in this um, field here in the United States. So sometimes I feel a little bit blind about yeah. uh, these jobs in general. Oh my goodness. Caroline, I wish you could just sort of like put that into an Instagram post or something mm -hmm. because every job seeker feels like we're flying blind. We're like trying to sort of get our way towards something that feels right, but it's hard to understand what that looks like. Here's how LinkedIn can help. Check this out, Caroline. We're going to come over here to LinkedIn. I want everyone to do this with me. So look specifically for the USC page. 
on LinkedIn. So we're going to look up USC. And again, everyone come along with me on this journey. And then once we get to the USC page, what I want to do is I want to find, um, let me just type for University of Southern California. Once we have that page, I'm going to show you what I call my digital baby. This is the tool that my team built at LinkedIn. So I'm very proud of it. And look what it can do for you. Almost half a million Trojans that you can find and filter and reach out to whenever you want to not feel so limited in what's possible. So Caroline, how about we search for someone in the privacy law space? How does that sound? Sounds very good. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna put in privacy law on my screen. If you're interested in video games, put in video games. If you're interested in cryptocurrency, put in cryptocurrency, whatever you're excited about, plug that in. And we're gonna find some people you can learn from. And look where these people are, Caroline. They're at Microsoft and Meta and Oracle and Google and the law school and Amazon. So many cool places. So we're gonna come down here and look at this. Ding, ding, ding. Andrew is in the exact two places you're excited about, cybersecurity and privacy. So let's go to Andrew's profile so we can learn from him. And what we're gonna do on Andrew's profile is we're gonna figure out how to reach out. And check this out, by the way, Caroline. Andrew is in cybersecurity and privacy at Roblox, which is pretty darn cool in my book. How does that sound to you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So now tell me this, Caroline. Do you want to click connect? Do you want to click message? Or do you want to click more? What's the best way to get started? First, I read a little bit more about this person and understand what this person does. And then I would probably connect. I can see he has this certification um, and he studied in the USC. And then I would try to connect after I read a little bit more about him. And I think I need to learn how to write to this person. What is important, like first message, hey, I'd like to connect with you because of this and this and that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to just uh, highlight what you mentioned there, which is you want to connect. Now, I know it might be tempting to go right to message, but I'm going to tell you, Caroline, message is a trap where LinkedIn is trying to get you to pay for LinkedIn premium yeah. so that they can take your money. <laughs> yeah. Now, Caroline, do you have $50 a month for the rest of your time at USC to spend on LinkedIn premium? No, I don't want. I don't want to spend this money in the LinkedIn Premium. <laughs> exactly. And I know this filter of the message. If you don't have the premium, you need, you cannot send the message. Right. So instead of doing that, watch this. Everybody, if you hit connect and add a note, you can write a message to Andrew, and it doesn't cost you a cent. So everyone, blow it up with love for Caroline, because she has saved you hundreds of dollars that you can use in way better ways. So thank you for that, Caroline. Now, let's write our message together. What's the first thing you want to say to Andrew that really emphasizes what you have in common? That I am a student in USC. Yeah, I'm a USC Trojan who is passionate about cybersecurity um, and privacy. And so there you go. In the first message, with just a couple of words, you have all these things in common. Same alma mater, same passions. You're off to the races. Next, I'm going to give you two options, Caroline. Do you want to give an elevator pitch about yourself, talking about how awesome you are, or do you want to ask for Andrew's advice about your career? Uh, can we do both? Well, you don't have that many of space. I'm going to ask it this way. Caroline, do you like it when people try to sell you stuff? When they come up to you in a bar in Los Angeles and say, Caroline, I'm so amazing. Talk to me. Does that appeal um, to you? If I'm looking for someone, yes. Okay. Usually, no. <laughs> yeah, so usually, in no. I, in this, in this uh, situation, I would just introduce myself a little bit. And as we are doing, like, I am a USC Trojan, and I am an international um, student, yeah. and I would but like here, just some advice and something. Yeah. Like. Here's the thing. Because you have such limited space, I wouldn't even worry about giving this whole bio about yourself. I would focus on him because here's the little thing that I've learned as someone who used to be in your shoes and is now an old guy, now an alum, is alumni love to talk about their experience, to tell their story. Mm -hmm. And so you want to appeal to him by giving him a chance to share his experience. 
to as such, I'd love to hear about your journey in this space and what you've learned along the way. So now we've really appealed to his sort of generative sense, the idea of paying it forward. One last question, Caroline. Do we want to ask for an hour of Andrew's time tomorrow or maybe 10 minutes next week? Uh, 10 minutes next week. You're right. And why? Why is that a better approach? So I can give him time to check his schedule and everything. Yeah. And also we want to lower the friction. As someone who's been a marketer in Silicon Valley at Google and Apple and all these places, the number one way to get someone to do something is to make it easy to say yes. And so rather than asking for too much, we're going to ask for just the bare minimum. I'm going to say, I know you must be slammed, but any chance you have even 10 minutes for a quick chat next week. And now, even if Andrew's got a million things going on over at Roblox, he says, hey, I would love to help out a Trojan who's interested in this space. 10 minutes is not too much. So you're off to the races. Now, everyone, give Caroline some more love because she has put together a template that absolutely nails it. Here's what we have in common. Here's what I would love to learn. Here's how easy it is to say yes. So, so far, so good. There's one last question, Caroline. And that is, when you have a chance to chat with Andrew, whether it's over coffee, whether it's over Zoom, what do you want to ask him to learn about his field? What's going to help you make a really good decision? I think in my case right now, it's just the question that I'm struggling about them. How was his life when he finished the, his studies, yeah. for example? How was the job searching? Yeah. And how he decided to pursue the field he's working? Absolutely. How did you choose to enter cybersecurity? I love this. This is great. Now, I wanted to make sure that we cover all the bases here, Caroline. And so these questions are good for every alum. Tell me about your journey. Tell me about your experience. But at the end of the day, we've got to tie it back to you and what makes you unique. So tell me this, Caroline. What is some of the stuff that you have absolutely loved back in your work in Brazil? And what kinds of stuff about that work drove you crazy? Tell me the best stuff and the worst stuff. About my work? About your work and about you and what you've discovered about yourself. Um, about my work, I really love to work with privacy and contracts in general. Oh. So I have a large background working with privacy in related to contracts. Yeah. And your second question was about what I hated. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Tell me the dark side, Caroline. This is speaking. All the juicy details. Um, I guess the when I had the feeling, oh my God, I hate this thing. It's because general people don't have information about privacy and it makes our work very difficult. When uh -huh. you're working with that data and contracts and documents and backlogs. So... That was very difficult. Okay, so look what I just did here. I took the things that make you you, that make you unique in terms of I love this kind of stuff, I hate this kind of stuff, and I turn them into questions that you can use to build a crystal ball to predict your future. Because the only thing that can stop an awesome Trojan is if you choose a path that's not a good fit for you, that would be better for one of your classmates. But if you ask smart questions today, and find a path that makes sense for who you are, you're gonna be unstoppable out there, Caroline. And I cannot wait to see you succeed. So Caroline, I have one last request. Please come to my profile on LinkedIn. I just put it in the chat. Send me a message right now, and I will hook you up with a profile makeover right after today's session, okay? Okay, thank you. Caroline, you were awesome. Everyone, please raise the roof for Caroline. She blew it up. And then ask your own questions. And again, you can do it in a couple places. So you can um, put it into the chat, you can put it into the Q&A, you can raise your hand um, absolutely right in there. So um, by all means, go for that. Okay, if you've got questions about networking, reaching out to alumni, any of that stuff, let's talk about it. We're headed over to Trisha. Oops, Trisha just put her hand down, sorry. Um, if you've got a question, let me know. Um, we were gonna go over to Arushi. Arushi, what's on your mind? 
Feel free to unmute there, Rishi. Um, hi, so uh, I'm Arushi. I actually um, I'm a computer science student here at, uh, as a master's student. Um, I've done some like software experience, like I have some software experience from before, um, but I'm looking with my major to, you know, switch towards the AI track and like getting jobs in that field. Um, currently, I'm like more focused on getting an internship for the summer. Uh, how do I so like my experience is not in AI yet, right? And then my courses, like I'm still at the beginning stage of my master's. So I don't have a lot of relevant experience in AI as such. How would you say I tailor my like LinkedIn, for instance, because I can either, if I want to sell myself, it's through the experience I've had because what I want to do, I don't have experience in that. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So I think the tricky thing is when you are first starting out, you're going to see these job descriptions that say five years of this and 10 years of that. And you're going to talk yourself out of the job. You're going to have what we call imposter syndrome. But what I'm going to challenge you to do, and this is using the power of AI, is to figure out how the work you've done, whether it's volunteer work, extracurricular work, academic work, ties into that world. So I'm going to give you an example, Rushi. If I was in your shoes, I would say, how do I reframe my marketing resume to be more focused on AI roles. And watch what happens. When I paste it in, I'm gonna give you the prompts right here in the chat. ChatGPT is an incredible pattern matching machine. So it can start to figure out some of the stuff that you did in your last role, whether it's extracurricular or volunteer, is super relevant. And so it might say, hey, um, make sure that you get credit for the fact that you applied some of those machine learning techniques as a student, as a volunteer. Make sure that you mention some of the uh, uh, stuff that you wrote in your academic classes that was relevant to that space. And so the bottom line, Arushi, is I never want you to talk yourself out of a role. And if you're ever feeling stuck, please schedule some time with your amazing team, with Addy, with Sarah, with their colleagues, because they can also help you see those connections even beyond what ChatGPT can do. Does that make sense, Arushi? Uh, yeah, thanks. Great question. Thank you for asking. Okay, we're going to go next to a question from the Q&A. Um, Cindy has a great question. If the person does not check their LinkedIn because some never look at it, do you recommend other ways to reach out? Yes, Cindy, I love this. This is like a next level question. So what Cindy is getting at is what if we reach out to Andrew and we never hear back? Maybe Andrew doesn't check his LinkedIn. Maybe all of his messages go to spam. Well, I have another idea for you, which is if you come over here to hunter.io, this tool will let you figure out the email address for any professional in the world and it does not cost you a cent. We come over to the finder, we put in roblox.com, and bam, we have figured out that the Roblox email pattern is first name initial, last name full at roblox.com. And just like that, A. Scott at roblox.com is the person we want to reach out to. I'm going to tell you right now, the sad truth about all this professional work is as a professional, I probably spend at least 10 hours a week doing nothing but email. So even if I'm not checking my LinkedIn, you can be sure I'm checking my inbox. Great question. Okay, let's go next to uh, Akalesh. Akalesh, I'm going to unmute your line. There you go. Go for it. What's on your mind? And feel free to just unmute. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey. I'm a mechanical bachelor from India and have just come for industrial and system engineering. I'm trying to move into the... Uh... Keep going. Akalesh, are you still there? Oh, no, we lost Akalesh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, right now doing my master's in industrial and system engineering. And I'm trying to move into the field of healthcare. So, yeah, I'm also looking for a summer intern. Uh, what's your input into that? Yeah. If you're looking for summer internships, you really want to nail not just the next step where we talk about profiles, but then the additional step, which is connecting with people on the inside. So, Akalesh, is there a certain firm? that you might want to join this summer? Like, what's your dream company? Uh, I've just looked into Medtronics yeah, is one. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And for folks who don't know, Medtronic is, you know, a huge medical device company. And they are on LinkedIn, as is any organization in the world. And if you come over to the Medtronic page, check this out. If you click on this number of employees, this is a little wormhole, a little shortcut, if you will, to a company directory of all these people on the inside. And Akalesh... Do you yeah. think there are some people at Medtronic 
who happened to go to USC. Oh, there should be a lot. I think. <laughs> you better believe it. Check this out, y'all. You go to all filters. You come over here to school, put in University of Southern California. And before you know it, watch this. You have 250 Trojans that you could be reaching out to. Oh, okay. I know this is a bad pun, but talk about a Trojan horse. Someone on the inside of the company who's going to bat for you because you reached out to Lori or you reached out to Anish or you reached out to Janet and they say, hey, I want more Trojans here because I love uh, my time at USC. And now they're referring you, they're talking you up to the hiring manager. That's how to give yourself the absolute best advantage. Tap into that network early and often. Okay, Akalesh? Yeah, sure. We'll okay. give, uh, give that a go. Sure. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Okay, let's take maybe one question from the chat, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Um, let's see here. Ooh, this is a good one. Do you recommend using ChatGPT for writing emails, reaching out to people, and or writing resumes? Okay, so I would have recommended that about two years ago when ChatGPT first came out, because I was like, ah, oh, look at this. It's amazing. All of the writing is correct. It's mechanical. It's grammatical. But now, here's what's happened. Two years into our global AI experiment, we have all seen AI writing. So no longer is anyone fooled by, oh, ChatGPT wrote it. Instead, what I'm hearing from all my recruiting buddies is ChatGPT is killing us because all of these students are generating cover letters and stuff through ChatGPT, and it's super obvious. Watch this. Generate a cover letter for a marketing job at Google. And at first glance, you're like, this is amazing. Look at this. Here's my cover letter. But guess what? Every single ChatGPT cover letter starts out I am excited to apply for blah, blah, blah. And as soon as the recruiters see that, they automatically throw you out of the process because guess what? They knew you used ChatGPT. They know you can't be bothered to write anything yourself, and especially for a role like marketing where writing and creativity is so critical. That's just the kiss of death. So bottom line, what I'm going to show you in the next couple sessions is how not to use ChatGPT just for writing and sort of hurting yourself in the process, but how to use it for ideation, how to use it as your muse to generate new ideas, but still keeping that human creativity. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next topic. And quickly before we move on, I want to give you a quick crash course. Best way to use ChatGPT is keep these things in mind. A lot of people will say to me, Jeremy, should I use ChatGPT or Gemini or Perplexity or Copilot or Claude? There's a million models out there. But I'm going to recommend ChatGPT, and here's why. ChatGPT lets you do almost everything that's possible these days. You can come in here and you can upload files. So you can attach a CSV and have it write Python for you. You can have it search the internet for you. But the one thing that most other tools will not allow you to do is allow you to protect your data. And so if you come to ChatGPT and you come over here to temporary chat, this black and white branding will probably look familiar to you because guess what? It's just like incognito mode in Chrome where everything you share here is not saved, not baked into their model. So I know we're all freaking out as a society about what's happening with our data. ChatGPT is the only one with robust controls to keep your data your own. That's why I recommend it. Now, whichever tool you choose, simple way to remember it is garbage in equals garbage out. Again, if you say, write me a cover letter, you're going to get predictably bad results. However, if you say, hey, take my existing cover letter, review it against this job description, Tell me which keywords I'm missing that are really important. Much better use case, much more specific, much better results. And then finally, the craziest thing of all is do not fall for the Google trap of just assuming that what you see on the screen is what you get. You can always get better results if you push back on the machine. Say, give me better data, more specific examples, give me citations. I want you to have a dialogue with these tools, not a monologue. Okay, with that in mind, time for our next pop quiz. If you were a recruiter at Google, at Goldman Sachs, at McKinsey, any top firm in the world, how would you tell if a given candidate on LinkedIn was a good fit? Is it A, the classes they took, B, the keywords they listed, or C, the GPA they worked so hard to earn, A, B, or C? And once again, despite my best attempts, Sarah and Addy, to fool all of your Trojans, Jake could not be fooled, Alexandra could not be fooled, Arushi could not be fooled, keywords are critical. And to prove it to you, let me show you what happens inside the black box. So here I am. I'm a recruiter on that fancy $10,000 tool. I come in and I search for job title because that's where I always start. I search for locations. I search for skills. 
And look what pops up. Every single person who rises to the top of my results, the people that I'm going to reach out to, they all have that job title, but they all have it in one specific section. Their headline, their headline, their headline. And that is not an accident or even a coincidence. It is by design. Because here's the challenge that LinkedIn's engineers have. Every single day, they have to break millions of ties because people all have the same keywords. Who goes to the top? Who goes to the bottom? Well, it all depends where those keywords are. And because the headline is limited to just 220 characters, shorter even than a tweet, it's considered the most authentic, the hardest to game, and the most important section on your profile. So it's given extra weight, and that's where we want to begin our investigation. I'm going to be giving out a free profile makeover right on the spot to the first person to raise their hand right now. And that person, and actually, I should be really clear about this. Um, we need to have someone who is a current student. So if you are not a current student for USC, please put your hand down just so we can give some love to current students. I'll give you a chance to lower your hands. Again, if you are a current student, keep your hand up. And we're going to go to Deep D. So Deep D, I saw your hand go up. Um, go ahead and unmute your line. And then come join us for this deep dive into how to make your profile rock. Welcome, Deep D. Hi. Hi, Deep Thank D. You. I just want to confirm, you are a current student. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I'm a student of USC Engineering okay. Management. Okay, wonderful. Fantastic. So, Deep D, tell me this. Um, what is the job title that you want to be found for? And together, we're going to make it happen. Sure. Uh, it would be product management. Oh, beautiful. So Deepti wants to be a product manager, which in some ways is the sexiest job of the 21st century, building all yeah. those tech tools and products. <laughs> and of course, right. it's going to be a competitive job too, right, Deepti? Okay. okay. Yeah, lots of people going for it. So we've got to make Deepti stand out. And we're going to do it step by step. Now, Deepti, imagine that you were a recruiter. And you could be at Google or Meta or any of these places. You're going to come <laughs> in here and you're going to search for product manager. And what I want everyone okay. to try right now is try this on your own screen. Come to LinkedIn, run your search. Actually, let me just start over. So we're starting from scratch. And then what I want you to tell me, Deepti, is what all these top ranking people have in common. So when we look at Deeksha's profile and Brad's profile and Glenn's profile and Nikki's profile, why are they at the top of my list? Because of what it matches the keyword that we give, that's product management. They do match the keyword, but where do they match the keyword? In the headline. In the headline, yes. And this is so critical because the headline really is distinct. It is the number one thing that the, the algorithm looks for, which is why it's where we have to start our search. So Deep D, mm -hmm. do you mind putting your profile into the chat? You know, just copy and paste it uh, right off the, the URL right here. And while you paste that in, I want everyone to give Deep D tons of love right in the chat for being our awesome next volunteer. She's going to completely rock your worlds with what she shares with us today. So make it rain hearts. Oh, I love that. And then Deep D, when you're ready, we're going to dive in. Okay, so Deep D's profile is right here. Now, Deep D, tell me this. Why will you never be found for product management roles as your headline is configured today? Yeah, I, I got that now. I should have put the product management. I just noted your point. <laughs> That's right. And well, here's the problem. Have you been a product manager before, Deepti? Uh, I have had some experience as a technical lead in my team before. But not probably uh, a product manager, right? Not, not the product yeah, manager. Yeah, right. And so this is, this is, again, what we were talking about before with Caroline is that imposter syndrome, that sense of, oh, I want to do it, but I haven't been it before. It really paralyzes so many students. And I want to show you a way to cut that Gordian knot, to break through. So watch this. I'm going to come right over here. And don't worry, this is not live on the internet. It's only on my screen, DT. And I'm going to put in product manager. How do you feel when you see that right there in your headline? I feel good. Oh, you feel good? Oh, good, good. Okay, I'm glad. I want you to feel confident. I will tell yeah. you, a lot of students will tell me, Jeremy, are you crazy? I can't call myself a product manager. I haven't even done it before. Yeah, yeah. So there's got to be a way around this. I'm going to give you a little hint. Uh how about we aspiring product ah, manager? Ah, yes. If we put one word here, aspiring product manager, or seeking right. product manager roles, or exploring product manager internships, the beautiful thing about every one of those variations is they are identical in the mind of the algorithm. 
the algorithm is a heat seeking missile. And so it wants your most important keyword and your most important section, period. So for every Trojan out there, it would be madness to continue down the road of just calling yourself a student or focusing on what you've done in the past. Literally go to your profile right now and at least signal where you're headed. I know you're curious, you know, you could say product manager or product marketing. You could list a couple different things, totally fine, but at least give recruiters something to go on because as powerful as this tool is, they cannot see inside your head. And that's why you've got to put it where they can see it. Does that make sense, Deep Deep? Yes, definitely. Okay, so that's step one. Now let's be honest. How competitive is this field, Deep Deep? How many people are on the recruiter's radar? Yeah, right. I know it's depressing, right? Five and a half yeah. million. Oh my God. But here's the good news. If it's hard for you, it's going to be hard for the uh, students as well. And so, or not for the students, excuse me, hard for the recruiters. And so here's what we've got to do. We've got to understand what the recruiter does next. And deep deep, if you were a recruiter at Google looking for a product manager, um, you are not just going to settle for five and a half million profiles because no one's got time for that. What are you going to filter for, Deep D, to find the right product managers? Um, I would look at their experience first uh, and the company that they have worked in. Now, look at what Naku said. Naku said, yeah, experience, company, all that stuff is good, but it's a little bit too removed. Like, how do you search for experience? That's amorphous. What kind of company would you search for? Versus if you search for skills, you are searching for the exact thing that you are hungry to find. I need someone who's good at A-B testing, wireframes, product roadmaps, all that good stuff. Now, deep deep, if we wanted to understand that recruiter mindset, what do you think are the three most important skills that they crave in future PMs? Oh, first would be the product knowledge, project, project management, yeah. uh, communication, cross-functional, yeah. Uh, management. It's true. And in tech, we love cross-functional. It's like the, the answer <laughs> for everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all those sound good. But I'm going to tell and you. And they the got truth. to yeah. have what design skills as well. Design skills, wireframes, UX, all that good stuff. Now, here's the reality. It's going to be different for every recruiter in every role. So there's not just like one list of questions or one list of skills. But I've got really good news for you, Deep Deep. Instead of just guessing at what those keywords are, what if I told you that every single day, recruiters are giving you a list of those skills somewhere on LinkedIn? Where is that list, that source of truth, Deep Deep? Which one of these sections? And if anyone knows, put it in the chat. How about uh, posts? Uh, not posts, although they might be in a posting but it's under jobs. And I know Arushi got that and Paula got that, it's awesome. And look at this, mm -hmm. inside the job descriptions is all the stuff that matters. So let's take this one over at Ascendian and inside the job description is all that stuff. You must have experience with hardware, telecom, cable, JIRA, uh, roadmap, development, risk management, et cetera, et cetera. When you look at this with your human eyes, Deep D, your eyes start to glaze over because there are so many things here. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's exactly my feeling too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the power of AI to give you x-ray vision into the black box of LinkedIn to see what actually matters and to see how you're doing. Are you ready for the journey, Deep Deep? Yes. Okay, exactly like Caroline says, we're going to use ChatGPT. So here's what I want every Trojan to do. Grab a job description you're excited about. And grab it off LinkedIn, grab it off Indeed, grab it off Handshake. Join me mm -hmm. over in ChatGPT land. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a very simple prompt. And again, this is using ChatGPT the right way. Not write my profile, not write my resume, but analyze my profile. What are the top 15 most important skill keywords in this JD, job description? And I just pasted it in. I'm not a coder. I'm not a data scientist. But watch what ChatGPT can do. Let me get rid of all that fluff, all that stuff that doesn't matter. Let me pull out the stuff that actually does. So that's step oh. one. Now we have our cheat sheet. Deep D, are you ready for step two, which is your moment of truth? How you're doing inside LinkedIn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 
So here's what we need. We're gonna have a little uh, a little drum roll. It's gonna be a digital drum roll because we're not all physically together. So what I want everyone to do is come to the chat, put in your favorite drum emoji, whether it's marching drum, bongo drum, whatever. And we're gonna count down from 10 as we reveal Deep D's moment of truth. Get ready, y'all. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7. So I want you to start by grabbing your profile. I want you to come over to ChatGPT, put in this prompt. 6, 5, 4, um, 3, 2. Okay, what are the missing keywords in my profile? And just paste it in. And now, dun -da -da -da, 2 and 1. We have Deep D's moment of truth which is this is what's missing. Deep D is missing all 15. Oh no, Deep D, you're doomed. <laughs> I guess you can't be a product manager. Or can you? Tell me this, Deep I have D. to tell him my LinkedIn, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's right. Tell your LinkedIn and let's just, let's break it down step by step. We'll do this together. Of these 15 yeah. keywords, I kind of have a feeling that as an engineer, you probably already have experience with some of these things. So please just tell me like, Hey, I've done hardware. I've done requirement generation. I've done risk management. Give me a taste of what you already have experience with. Uh, I have experience in Jira. I was a scrum master in my team. Ooh. Uh, I should also say I can include for the risk management. Uh, and also there was product roadmap because from POC to the delivery, I was responsible yeah. for producing a project. And I'll just stop there because I kind of feel have a feeling you have almost all of them, to be honest. But we'll just start <laughs> there for, for the purpose of the demonstration. Say, so I've experienced with 4811. What are the three best places on my profile to get credit? And then watch what happens. Once you plug this in to chat GPT, you're going to start to figure out, dun, 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 you have three sections that are ripe. And these are what I call the holy trinity of LinkedIn, the three most important sections experience, skills, and about. Because of course your headline's too short. You can't really add all these things in, but these sections are amazing. I wanna take them one at a time. So deep deep, we're gonna start with about, and you know you don't have that right now. If mm -hmm. I asked you what to put in your about section on LinkedIn, would you have any idea what goes there? Uh, I would say, oh, first of all, what I'm interested in, that should be product management. Uh, and then I would say, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, what I've worked in and my interests. Yeah, absolutely. And so here's the thing. I'm so mad at LinkedIn because it used to be called Summary. And Summary made a ton of sense. You know, people have summaries on their resume, totally clear. When they called it About, everyone's like, About what? So let me make it clear for you guys. There are two audiences for everything you do on LinkedIn. There is the algorithm that finds you and there's the human recruiter that chooses you. And each one has different, different incentives. So deep, deep, to get the algorithm to find you, I want you to flat out just list your best skills right out of the JD. Specialties, top skills, list them again and again, make sure they can find you. But then for the human recruiter who needs a little bit more, you wanna give them the best of two worlds. First, you wanna be super clear. I want one sentence at the top of your about section that says, hey, aspiring product manager, awesome engineer, whatever it is that you're going after, let the recruiter know that they're in the right place. And then number two, give them evidence. Anyone can call mm -hmm. themselves a product manager, but walk the talk. You talked about being a technical lead. You talked about being a scrum master. Get credit for those things and knock their right. socks off. And if you play your cards right, you're going to have them choosing you already before they even get to the experience section. And if anyone wants to borrow that template, it's right there in the chat. Feel free to grab it. That's number one. Now, Deep D, let's talk about number two, your experience. Deep D, I see your jobs over at HPE, which is awesome. But Deep D, I don't see any bullet points. Tell me this. Do you have full bullet points for each of these roles on your resume, on your hard drive? I, I have it right now. Okay, awesome. I feel no self-respecting Trojan would ever go out into the world without that resume. Otherwise, you'd feel naked, right? Here's the, here's the problem. How many times every single day is that resume on your hard drive being scanned by recruiters? Mm -hmm. no What's the times. answer? Zero, zero times. <laughs> because I'll be honest, recruiters would probably love to hack inside your uh, computer, but they don't know how to do it. So like Glenn said, Goose said, yes, Glenn. Um, now yeah. let's compare that to LinkedIn. 
how many times every single day, Deep D, is your LinkedIn profile being scanned by recruiters, just by recruiters, just on LinkedIn every day? Uh, very less. Like, give it a number. Is it five, 10, 100? Uh, let's say five. Five, okay. So you're a little bit off because the answer is 100 million. Every really? single day, every single person in this call who has a LinkedIn profile anyway, your profile is being scanned because guess what? Recruiters aren't paying $10,000 a year for nothing. They're paying $10,000 a year for unlimited access to every profile. And every recruiter search searches every profile, every last word, which means if you've got great bullet points on your uh, resume, but nothing on your profile, you're missing out deep, deep. And I don't want you to miss out. So the easiest thing for every Trojan to do, take those beautiful bullet points, including the keywords, paste them on LinkedIn. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then one last thing, which is the skill section. Good news for you, Deep D. Just two months ago, LinkedIn increased the number of skills you could list from 50 to 100, which means as of this moment, you have 79 blank slots. Do you think, Deep D, you could fill that up using some of this chat GPT magic? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. So bottom line, Deep D, you are awesome. You are going to be an amazing PM, but you have to give recruiters a chance to find you so they can realize it too. Now, Deep D, you've been fabulous. I'm going to give you that profile makeover, but would you be willing to do one little homework assignment for me if I promise it's going to be the most important homework you ever do? Sure. Okay, so Deep D's a little like, what have I gotten myself into? Well, let me back it up. No. <laughs> the reason I call this the most important homework is that I believe the whole point of education is to open doors to opportunity, to get access to a better life. And I think the single best thing you can do, even more than the homework you do for your USC profs, as important as that is, mm -hmm. is to let recruiters know, hey world, here I am. Here's what I can do for you. And so I want you to add those things to your profile and then come back to me um, and let me know when you're ready for a second round. Okay, Deep T? Definitely, Jeremy. Okay, fantastic. And so bottom line, um, I want everyone to give Deep T a lot of love. And by the way, if you can't copy from the chat, the easiest thing to do is just copy straight from my profile. So click on my profile right over here, come to my about section, and you can copy it straight off the profile. All right. Okay. I, oh yeah, Deepti, did you have a question? No, no, no. Okay, awesome. Um, if you guys have questions about profiles, and I suspect that you do, let's get into it. So if you wanna talk about headshots, cover photos, endorsements, recommendations, put your most burning questions in the Q&A, or better yet, raise your hand. I'm always gonna call on people who raise their hand first because I think that's a great way to get engaged. Okay, let's go to Naku. Naku, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. What do you got for us? Hi. Uh, my, uh, so uh, I have a pretty uh, I mean, wide range of experience across a lot of industries. Uh, well, uh, should I highlight all of them or just the, so uh, I'm also targeting uh, the uh, director level or VP level product management roles. Again. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Simple. So here's the number one thing, Naku, go right back to where we started. If a recruiter has six seconds to look at your resume or your profile, they don't have time to figure out why you're a fit. You've got to make it easy and obvious for them. So that mm -hmm. means getting rid of the stuff that's not relevant, massively uh, highlighting the stuff that is. And so, I, know that's, I know it's hard because a lot of times they say, oh, but I love that job. It was such a great job. But the reality is, is if we want to get the next job, the job that's even better, we've got to make it easy for recruiters. Go for it, Naku. So is it is it okay to remove some of the experience from the uh, uh, from LinkedIn? Would it not count as misrepresentation or something? Yeah, just be clear, LinkedIn is your own. Like it is your story to tell. And so a lot of times people will say, hey, I don't want to have ageism against me. I'm going to remove stuff that kind of dates me too back. I'm going to focus on the stuff I've done most recently, or I'm going to focus on the stuff that's most useful for recruiters to know. So don't worry about you know, whether it has to be this or that. Tell the story that you want to tell because that's the one that's going to get you hired. Okay, Naku? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Great question. Okay, let's take a question from the chat. Um, dun -dun -dun -dun. Ooh, my, these Q&As uh, Q are coming in so well. Okay, um, let's see. Um, are endorsements important? Ah, yes. So endorsements at the very bottom of your profile are not important. 
And to explain why, let's go back to the source of truth. Even though it's fun to collect these things, if you look at the LinkedIn recruiter screen, what you will notice is there's nowhere for recruiters to filter for endorsements. Why is that? It's because they don't trust them. You know, as an example, when endorsements first came out a decade ago, my own mom endorsed me for everything from astronomy to zoology, two things I know nothing about. And that same mom problem has plagued LinkedIn ever since because we just can't know which endorsements are legit. So bottom line, don't worry about the endorsement game. However, do try to get at least one recommendation from a professor or a boss or a colleague because recruiters see these recommendations at the very top of your profile. And that means it helps them decide quickly who's legit versus someone who just claims they're awesome without any third-party proof. Great questions. Okay, let's take another question from the chat. This time we're going to Cole. Cole, I'm giving you the microphone, go for it. Uh, so my question, I'm a freshman in undergraduate CS with an emphasis in machine learning and AI. I'm taking other courses online on like deep learning and stuff like that. Yeah. But my question is, how can I stand out while being young in a saturated market? Because I'm 19, just turned 19. I don't have a ton of job experience in this uh, kind of realm. So how can I use what I have so far to kind of present it best to companies? Oh, Cole, I'm so glad you asked that. So here's the reality. Like, if you are to use your biggest advantage, which is the fact is that you have all this time to go out there and build awesome stuff, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet to you, Cole. I will tell you right now that if you spend your time at USC building models, maybe even building a startup or a nonprofit with friends, building projects, that is going to become exhibit A for why people should hire you for internships, for full-time roles, and for the rest of your career. The number one thing that drove me crazy when I was the boss of the marketing team at Khan Academy is so many folks said, oh, I took a marketing class or I watched a YouTube video about marketing, but they weren't getting their hands dirty. Even my kindergartners back in Brooklyn knew if you want to learn something, you got to do it yourself. You got to build it. And so Cole, tell me this. Do you have opportunities to actually go beyond just learning about this stuff and actually create stuff yourself? Absolutely. At USC, I just need to look for them. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not going to be in the classes. Like, yes, classes are amazing, but maybe it's you meet up with a couple of classmates who want to work on something together and you build it in your spare time. Maybe you find a nonprofit in LA that needs help with, you know, an expert in this space and you build an amazing tool for them. If you can find those opportunities wherever they exist, I promise you that's going to be the calling card that builds your career. Okay, Cole? Yeah, I've applied to do um, some research at some different um, artificial intelligence groups. Cool, cool. And I'll just throw something here. You know, for folks who want to do both well for yourselves and good for the world, there's an org that I really like called catchafire.org. And what they're doing is they're trying to match up volunteers with nonprofits, but not volunteers in terms of like serving meals at a soup kitchen, as important as that is, but volunteers who can build data models, volunteers who can do marketing. And so if you volunteer with Catch a Fire, you're going to actually get to build something really useful and do something really good for the community. So check that out. Okay. I think we are, should probably move on to our last pop quiz at this point, but it will definitely allow for more time at the end. I know everyone's asking like, hey, can we get the recording? Can we get the recording? Absolutely. Your folks, Sarah and Addie, they've got your back. They've got the recording. They're going to send you all the slides, all the links, but don't go anywhere because I have one last mind-blowing goodie coming up at the very end. So I want you to stick around for that. That being said, quick couple of things I want you to watch out for when it comes to AI. We call them the ABCs. I think the first thing you should be careful about is not tone or style. Oh, it's too robotic, but pure accuracy. If you use ChatGPT to generate a resume, parts of it are going to look really good, but parts of it are going to be straight up hallucinations. And if that gets into your resume or your LinkedIn profile, it's not just game over for your candidacy, it could be game over for USC with that employer. So don't jeopardize a century long relationship just because you got a little lazy. Even if you use AI, use it to analyze, to research, not just to come up with all these hallucinations. B is for bias. I'll give you a quick example of bias. So a lot of times when we think about ChatGPT, we think, oh, it feels like an alien civilization come down to earth. When in fact, the ChatGPT is just human data fed back to us with biases intact. As an example, 
If you say, generate a story about a kindergarten teacher, um, every single time you do this, because I've tried a million times, it's going to tell you about Miss Lily or Miss Sarah, and that's fine. But what it's really telling you, if you think about it, is there are certain jobs that are only for certain people. You know, imagine putting in, show me a picture of a CEO, tell me a story about a scientist. And if there's a certain bias baked into our society, it's going to be replicated. So for you guys, I don't want you to reinforce those stereotypes, but to push back against them and watch out what you're getting back. And then finally, confidentiality. You know, you've probably heard about this poor engineer at Samsung who lost his job because the non-public data that he put in the chat GPT showed up on a competitor's screen. If you want to avoid that fate, you definitely have temporary chat, but I've got something even better for you. If you click on your face and then click on settings, you will find this obscure little thing called data controls. And this nice little sentence, improve the model for everyone, which sounds great in theory, but let me translate what it really means. Improve our model with your data so we can get richer. If you are not happy with that trade-off, please toggle this off once and for all right now, and every future prompt will not be shared with the ChatGPT model so you can be confident that your data is truly your own. So that's the ABCs of the dark side of AI. Time for the final pop quiz. Imagine now that you're a few years down the road. Maybe you did start a startup at uh, USC, or maybe you've climbed the ranks, now you're the boss. The only catch is, is that as the boss in this scenario, you can only hire people from the cast of The Simpsons. If you had to hire one of these three members, who would you prefer? A, Homer Simpson. B, his daughter, Lisa. Or C, his boss, Mr. Burns. And I see a lot of Lisa fans here. I see Patricia saying B, Kristen saying B, Alexa saying B. And it turns out that you guys agree with pretty much every other human in the world because when sociologists go out to understand how humans create first impressions, it really boils down to two things. Number one, are you competent? Can you do the job? Do you know what you're talking about? But number two, would I want to do the job with you? If I'm gonna spend more time with you than my own family, I better like you. So bottom line, as you prep for your own interviews, I don't want you only focused on having the quote unquote right answer. I want you to focus on your delivery and how you come across. And to help you do that, I've got one last demo. So I'm gonna lower all hands, and this time I need an undergrad hand, undergrad student at USC. If you are a grad student, if you're an alum, please don't put your hand up. Otherwise, everyone can put their hand up if they're undergrad, and this time it's gonna be Cole. So Cole, you've already been on fire with the great questions. I'm gonna unmute and give you that opportunity. Hey, Cole. What's up? Okay, so Cole, I got a sense. You wanna be an AI, you wanna be a machine learning, deep learning. Tell me the name of a specific company where you would love to work. It could be open AI, it could be anthropic, what would be exciting? Um, I would love to work for open AI and I would also like to work for NVIDIA. Oh, cool, okay. Let's do NVIDIA actually, because I think it's a little bit lesser known. And yet, as you may have found, if you're reading the newspapers, NVIDIA Largest is now- market cap. Yeah, it's crazy. A company that was worth less than Intel a couple of years ago is now worth 300 times what Intel is worth. And so, if you want to get a job there, it's going to be tough. But here's the good news. We're going to hack the algorithm that is the NVIDIA hiring manager. So Cole, let's start with competence in terms of what you say, how you prep. Where could we go, Cole, to find the most likely questions you're going to get when you interview at NVIDIA? ChatGPT. ChatGPT. But again, if you just say, um, dun, 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 what are the most likely questions for an NVIDIA interview, it's not gonna be specific enough, right? It's gonna give you questions for engineers, questions for marketers all over the place. So or we... an AI deep learning developer. Exactly, there we go. So we're gonna say NVIDIA deep learning job. And what I want everyone to do is grab one last job description. So it could be um, a specific job that you're excited about, a job that you're ready to apply for, or just one that's more aspirational. Now, we're gonna grab the entire job description. We're gonna come back to ChatGPT and check this out, Cole. We're gonna say, what are the 10 most likely questions for this JD? And that really forces it to focus on the specific hiring manager. There is a boss behind the scenes who wrote this thing, so this is the stuff they care about. Now, we're not gonna focus on technical today, because that's a little bit beyond the, the scope of this. 
but we are going to talk about the behavioral questions. You know, tell me about a time you worked with different teams. Tell me about a time you communicated. When you get questions like this, Cole, how do you get organized? Is there a certain framework you like to use to really communicate competently? Uh, leading into an interview, I usually like to um, think of different scenarios and choose maybe two strong scenarios that can overlay multiple different questions. So one that I usually like to talk about is um, summer of junior year. Well, all of junior year, I was planning a nonprofit project. Oh. So throughout high school, I worked with a nonprofit group called Bellevue Life Spring, and we would raise money to support the homeless families in my school district. So we provided them with housing and food. Um, I was the co-chair of the youth council. So I was in charge largely of um, planning large fundraising products, projects. Um, so I would work with adults and sponsors. And the biggest project that I did was a 5K fun run. Took me about nine months to plan. I had sponsors from State Farm, Salesforce, um, Fabletics, and other companies. Wow. Um, and I worked with students from all across my school district. Um, I had people working on marketing, people working on web development, and people working on um, kind of like web design for our infographics. And in the end, we ended up raising about $25,000. It was super fun. Um, and it was great to work with people that wanted to help the community. Oh, I love that. Well, I got to tell you, Cole, I don't know if you know this or not, but you just used a framework that I'm sure the team at, at USC will endorse, which is something called the STAR method. Does this sound familiar to you? Um, it doesn't. Okay. So you're going to learn more about this when you, when you engage with the- Oh, wait. Uh, yes, I have seen yeah. this. Okay. Let me see if we can pull up a better version here. Um, so basically what this is, is human storytelling 101, which is you got to lay out the situation. You got to give me a specific task that you were tasked with. What was the amazing action? What was the result? Good way to think about this is think about Star Wars. You know, classic story starts with a galaxy far, far away. Okay, you're getting a sense of it. There's this big task. This terrible guys going around the galaxy, blowing up planets. Okay, someone's got to take a heroic action. Fly into the Death Star, take this bad boy out. And then finally, the result. Peace and prosperity restored to the galaxy. And I love what you did there, Cole, because you actually covered all these points in the course of that journey. Now, Cole, if you want to do that for every possible behavioral question under the sun, how long do you think it'll take you if you're going to like handwrite your notes for every one of those stories? Really long time. Yeah, watch this. This is the crazy thing. Generate a star answer for number eight using my CV, just in the interest of time. I'm going to literally paste in my own resume. And I want you guys to try this right now with yours. The crazy thing about this is that ChatGPT also understands that framework and it can take stuff right off your resume or your LinkedIn and break it down step by step. And it gives you what you need to be really good. Obviously, you're going to customize, you're going to edit, but it's a pretty good first draft. So how does that feel so far, Cole? using this to get organized really fast. Feels good. It yeah. also feels very tailored to um, the job description, which is super nice. Yeah, again, there's like a Venn diagram we're trying to pull off here, which is here's what they need, here's who I am. How can I bring those two things together to make it really clear I can serve the specific role? So that's step one. I'm gonna be honest with you, Cole, that's the easy part. The much harder part is the warmth especially because when you go into that interview room up here in Santa Clara, where NVIDIA is based, you're going to feel a little cold. You're going to feel a little nervous. So how do you come across as warm and engaging, Cole, if you feel so anxious on the inside? Um, smile more than you think you need to, in yes. my opinion, yes. and uh, keep eye contact, but break eye contact occasionally because you don't want to be staring at them. I love that. And what Cole's getting at is, hey, none of these things are mysteries. Like, we understand how to connect with another human being. But a lot of times, because we haven't trained on it, it's not built into our muscle memory. And if we have to force ourselves to do it, it's hard to force ourselves to do that and smile and answer questions all on the, on the spot. So, Cole, what if I could help you practice these things so they're absolutely baked into your DNA practically 
and you just walk in there and you totally crush it. Would that be helpful? That would be super helpful. Okay, check this out. This is basically the equivalent of what the USC football team does, which is they practice, they review, they practice, they review, they get better and better. And it turns out that you've got something very similar right here inside LinkedIn for free. If you come to interview prep and the link is right in the chat, you will find that all the most common interview questions, including specific questions, are here on view. And so if you wanna get ready to really rock these answers, you're gonna do what every top athlete does. You're gonna record yourself going through the motions so you can understand how you're coming across, what's the perception of warmth, and then you're gonna go one step further, Cole. You're gonna get AI coaching on how to improve that answer. So in terms of uh, the speed at which you speak, whether you're too monotone in your variation, whether you've got filler words that are distracting from your communication, plus you can share it with Sarah and Addie. You can even share it with USC alumni inside NVIDIA to get insider feedback. How does that sound? Sounds perfect. I want you to check out this tool. The link is in the chat because again, it is free to use. It is live now. And if you know that big day is on the horizon, better to come in with confidence, preparation, and be ready to kick butt. And Cole, you crushed it today. So please, please, please shoot me a message on LinkedIn and I'll hook you up with that makeover. Thank you so much. Okay, you were awesome, Cole. Thanks for representing the undergrads. Um, everyone, I know we're coming down to the end here. I know it's been a long session, but I wanna make sure to take a couple final few questions and then I wanna give you some crazy goodies to get you started on your journey. So bottom line, if you've got anything you wanna talk about, whether it's finding the right path, building a great profile, getting ready for interviews, let's talk about it. And again, if you raise your hand, I'll go with that first. Okay, let's go to Mahika. Mahika, I'm gonna give you the microphone. Feel free to unmute. Let us know what's on your mind. Go for it, Mahika. Hey there. Hey. Hi. So what's your so, question? Um, I would say more on the lines of uh, interview prep. Um, I recently had an interview experience uh, which was uh well which went pretty bad the oh. um the last part of the session uh really helped me take that away so more than a question i'm just uh showing my appreciation uh actually that last part did answer my all my questions uh so thank you so much for uh the uh the chat to today also can i can uh, how can i get a linkedin um uh, the like the makeup ah yeah yeah so basically that's an opportunity just for the volunteers today however, okay yeah however if, if if anyone's interested um i do have an opportunity for that i'll put it in the chat um sure but yeah bottom line um thank you for all you're doing Mahika, and i totally get it like interviews are super stressful and what i think is most important is if you can get practice with your amazing team at usc and supplement it with some of these automated ai tools that's gonna be the best of both worlds Okay, Mahika? Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, okay, of course. Okay, and here are some of those tools if anyone wants you know, the free makeover, all that stuff. Okay, let's take a question from the chat. Um, let's see here. Arjun says, what is the most efficient way to use AI to make over your LinkedIn profile? So Arjun, I think we covered some of the big stuff already. And again, I'm a big believer in the Pareto principle. 20% of what you do on your profile is gonna drive 80% of your visibility to recruiters. You could spend all this time going into the weeds on your profile. Let me make sure that I update my publications down here, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, that doesn't matter. No, no recruiter worth their salt ever is gonna read that far. What you really wanna nail is the headline to get found and then the couple of sections that really make it obvious that you're a rock star. Here's what I can do for you. Here's my experience. Here are my best skills. Um, and then if you plug that into ChatGPT and say, hey, how can I improve these three sections? It can compare it to the job description and give you really good feedback. Okay, someone said, how to get LinkedIn Premium for free. So good news, you do not need LinkedIn Premium. I know LinkedIn is trying to fool you into getting it. They're like, oh, you've got to get it. But here's the reality. If you want to connect with someone without having an in-mail, connect the ways we talked about. Send them a free connection message, find their email address, go to the USC alumni directory. So many ways to get in touch. Also, I want to be really clear about this. I know that a lot of the world of tech, there's kind of this idea of pay to play. You can buy your way to the top of Google results. 
you can buy your way to the top of Amazon results. The same is not true with LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn makes seven times more revenue from recruiters than job seekers, they are never going to favor job seekers and stick you at the top of the screen just because you bought LinkedIn Premium. Remember, recruiters are paying $10,000 a year. You're paying 50 bucks a month. So bottom line, the only way to get to the top of the screen is to earn your place there with the profile keywords, with the things that matter. So don't worry about premium. Use your money on much better things. Okay, I want to go, before we end up uh, today, back to our amazing hosts, back to Sarah, back to Addie. I know there are a million questions right now in the Q&A. Any ones that you wanted me to speak to before we close up today's session? Okay, it sounds like we're good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close up with a bunch of goodies, and I want to blow your mind a little bit. First thing is, I would love to connect with every Trojan out there. If we have not had a chance to connect already, fear not. Just send me a message on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, help you out, whatever you need. So feel free to connect. Number two is, if you want that ChatGPT book, um, all you got to do is come over here, and I have an Amazon hack for you to go along with the AI hacks which is, dun, 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 you come to Amazon, you sign up for a free trial of Kindle Unlimited or Audible, you download the book, cancel the trial immediately, and yet you still keep the book forever with my compliments and those of Jeff Bezos, I like to believe. So feel free to grab that book for free, save your money for better things. And then one last thing, back when I was in grad school, back in the summer of 2011, I was an intern at Apple on the iOS marketing team. And as a result, I was there at the very last keynote that Steve Jobs ever delivered. I'll never forget that even though he was very sick at the time, he still blew everyone's minds with his last slide. It's kind of like burned in my retinas. One more thing. And on that morning in July of 2011, Steve introduced the world to Siri for the very first time. Now, I know that Siri is not looking too good these days compared to ChatGPT, but I believe there is a line that goes right from that morning in July to where we stand today. So in honor of Steve, in honor of Siri, I've got one more thing for you and I call it Profile Bot 4K. So someone was asking before, hey, how do I ultimately um, use AI to make my profile better? Well, even though ChatGPT is pretty good, check out what this tool can do. If you come in here and say, hey, I wanna be a product manager. I wanna build the products of the future but I haven't been a product manager before, how can I make my case? How can I get found? And this tool will take everything I know about LinkedIn and the algorithms to customize your headline, your about section, your experience section, even posts you can make to stand out. And if there's anything that we forgot to cover, you come right over here and say, how do I get a recommendation on LinkedIn? And the little profile bot will keep going with everything you need to stand out in all the ways that matter. And this tool is yours free forever through the link in the chat because I want you to live out the words that Steve gave us, which are, hey, we are on this incredible journey in life, not just to go through the motions, to get a job, to pay off our student debt, but to do so much more, to make a big honking dent in the universe. And so I want you to take all the power of Trojan Nation, all the power of your amazing career team, and I want you to go out there and make the biggest darn dent possible because I know you can and I know you will, and I cannot wait to celebrate your success. So with that, I wish you tremendous uh, luck and a tremendous adventure as you blaze your trail through the world. And I'm gonna bring it back to Sarah and the team for more information about what's coming up next. So Sarah, Addy, back to you guys. Thank you so much, Jeremy. This was amazing. I'm pretty sure all of our students agree. I see a lot of clapping hands and thumbs up and hearts. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, we do have a page on um, AI at, on the Career Center website under online resources. There's AI guidelines. So guidelines on how to use AI effectively and smartly and safely, um, including ChatGPT and Google Gemini and Microsoft Copilot. Um, and so definitely check out that page. And uh, we also, this is, as you know, part of our AI career series. So this is the second 
uh, workshop in the series. And then the last one will be on harnessing AI for effective networking and informational interviewing. And that will be on October 3rd, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. as well. Um, more information to come on that soon. And then lastly, please fill out our survey. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback on this session as well as any of the other sessions you attend so that we can continue hosting excellent workshops and series like this. Um, your feedback is really helpful. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, I wish everyone a beautiful evening and then incredible adventures ahead. It's an exciting time. Thank you so much, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you to all the students who attended. Fight on, everyone. Fight on. Thank you.